Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my Dream Mirror Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for April 2021. I've been wanting to update the Dream Mirror deck since the release of Blazing Vortex with the new support we gained in the form of a new fusion monster and a bunch of other new cards for the main deck. It's a really interesting deck that focuses on going back and forth between the light and dark attribute Dream Mirror monsters, focusing on sort of like I would say the real world and then the Dream Mirror world. So two vastly different worlds that focus on different monsters, I guess being the same monster, just their dream world counterparts. It's a very, very interesting take on the deck with the new fusion monster. We were given a way to summon out the difference in the two different fusions we have with the extra deck plays, and then also focusing on all the different spell and traps we have to support this deck. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the level one Dream Mirror monsters, I run three Ikelos, the Dream Mirror Sprite. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, you can add one Dream Mirror card from your deck to your hand, except for Ikelos, the Dream Mirror Sprite. During the main phase or battle phase, if Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, you can tribute this card to special summon one Ikelos, the Dream Mirror Mara from your deck, and you can only use each effect of Ikelos, the Dream Mirror Sprite, once per turn. So with this card and the contrasting uh, Ikelos, the Dream Mirror Mara, being the dark attribute one, just being able to benefit from the special summon gives you more and more resources. Being able to add a Dream Mirror card won't limit us to any of the monsters, but also just being able to add many of the different Dream Mirror spells to our hand to use. Very, very useful for this setup. That's why I'm running three of this card. Also running three of its dark attribute counterpart being Ekelos, the Dream Mirror Mara. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, you can special summon one Dream Mirror monster from your hand, except for Ekelos, the Dream Mirror Mara. And during the main phase or battle phase, if a Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field spell zone, quick effect, you contribute this card to Special Summon 1, Ekelos, the Dream Mirror Sprite. From your deck, you can only use each effect of Ekelos, the Dream Mirror Mara, once per turn. So, like I said, contrasting with uh, the Sprite, you basically get a Special Summon instead of a Search. So they basically went with the opposites for all of the different card effects. And also focusing on the contrasting Mirror, that would be the field spell, whether it's Dream Mirror of Joy for Mara or your Dream Mirror of Terror for your uh, sprite. Both going back and forth, basically looking in the mirror is what I'm guessing this means or, you know, represents, obviously. But three copies of each of this card means you just have more search power and options of opening up at the beginning of the game. For the higher level monsters, I also run two Morpheus, the Dream Mirror White Knight. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, you can activate this effect. This card cannot be destroyed by battle or car effects this turn. And during the main phase or battle phase, if Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, you can tribute this card to special summon one Morpheus, the Dream Mirror Black Knight, from your deck. And you can only use each effect of Morpheus, the Dream Mirror White Knight, once per turn. More setup. And for a big factor, you'll summon it out most of the time with Mara to benefit from the special summon. And then just having the same option with the opposite mirror, that represents your Morpheus on the field to then summon out your Morpheus the Dream uh, Mirror Black Knight. I'm only running two copies of each of these cards just because if you open them in your hand they can be sort of a dread uh, you know a dead draw compared to the level one options in the deck. With your Black Knight, if this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. And during the main phase or battle phase, if a Dream Mirror of Joy is on the field zone, you contribute this card to special summon one Morpheus, the Dream Mirror White Knight. Having this gives you more of a protection effect when you use your White Knight. And then the destruction effect with your Black Knight, just contrasting both of the cards once again, going off of both of the different mirrors we run in the deck also. With the new card from Blazing Vortex being Neroi, the Dream Mirror Disciple, if a Dream Mirror monster in, in the on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then you can make it uh, car become a dark attribute. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, activate this effect. If a Dream Mirror of Joy is on the field, you can return one spell or trap your opponent controls to the hand. Also after that, if Dream Mirror of Terror is on the field, draw one card, then shuffle one card in the hand into the deck. You can only use the effects of Neroi, the Dream Mirror Disciple, once per turn. So contrasting effects depending on what mirror you have on the field. It's just more setup going off of this card being able to swap back and forth between the different attributes and depending on what mirror you have on the field is what I like about this card. It's basically like it's stuck in between the two different mirrors and then just representing whatever you have set up currently on the field to make use of. For some of the other cards, I also run two Phantasmos, the Dream Mirror Friend. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror Monster, you can target one level 8 or lower Dream Mirror Monster in your graveyard except for Phantasmos, the Dream Mirror Friend, and special summon it in defense position. And during the main phase or battle phase, if a Dream Mirror 
Mirror of Terrors in your field zone. You can tribute this card to Special Summon 1, Phantasm the Dream Mirror Foe from your uh, deck. And you can only use each effect of Phantasm the Dream Mirror Friend once per turn. So once again, it helps for the Graveyard Special Summon. Just being able to give you off more and more resources depending on the setup you have. To then summon out more and more cards and resources to use on the field altogether. On run 2 though, you really need to have it be Special Summoned off of other cards. Which is how you can make use of it with the main go-to level 1s we're already running in the deck. I also run 2 to finish off the Dream Mirror monsters in the main deck. Phantasos, the Dream Mirror foe. If it's special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, this card can attack directly this turn, having more of the offensive capabilities like the Dark Attribute cards we're showing. And during the main phase or battle phase of a Dream Mirror of Joys in the field zone, you can tribute this card to special summon Phantasmos, the Dream Mirror friend from your deck. And you can only use each effect of the Dream Mirror foe once per turn. M once again, just contrasting setup and only needing the two of it so you can have the different options to go into. The attack directly works very, very well because in case you didn't notice, all the cards also have uh, contrasting attack and defense so 1900 attack directly against your opponent is definitely a lot better than if it were 900 like your dream mirror friend here and then to finish off the monsters, just for the Hand Trap of Choice, I am running three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. Just the Hand Trap of Choice to go with because uh, stopping your opponent's setup is a big part of it while you use all of your different uh, Dream Mirror monsters to set up more and more of the plays to go up against your opponent and set up your fusion plays. Now moving on to the spells, probably a you know good amount of field spells in the deck for the fact that we're running three Dream Mirror jo of Joy for our first go-to field spell. During the end phase, you can banish this card to activate one Dream Mirror of Terror directly from your hand or deck. You can only activate this effect of Dream Mirror Joy once per turn, and Dream Mirror monsters you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects or their monster attacks, except for Dream Mirror monsters with the highest level. And this effect can only be applied when you control a light Dream Mirror monster. So the basic setup with this card is to resolve and have the one Dream Mirror monster on the field to make use of with the same attribute contrasting the type of mirror we have, and being able to go into our next card, which is the Dream mirror of terror which i'm also running three of because you want to have max copies of these cards so you can see all the different uh, you know resources going back and forth between the different mirrors so you don't run out of any cards after banishing each one but also being able to banish terror to then set dream mirror of joy directly from the hand or deck just gives you more options and each time your opponent special summons a monster you inflict 300 damage to your opponent this effect is only applied when you control a dark dream mirror monster which should be a good majority of the time with your setup and being able to just burn away your opponent's life points every time your opponent's special summons a monster this will be the one you want to see on the field most of the time for that setup when you know your opponent's going for those plays but when you need to protect your own monsters you'll have dream mirror of joy on the field and I also run three Dream Mirror Phantasms. This is a continuous spell in the deck. When this card is activated, you can add one Dream Mirror monster from your deck to your hand. If a Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field zone, all monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. If Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, all monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. You can activate one Dream Mirror Phantasms per turn. So what's great is that these effects do stack depending on what you have on the field. If you activate multiple Phantasms, maybe a once per turn, but also just great to have search power too go into uh, one of our monsters because then it could just be that setup depending on what mirror you have on the field also so definite three of for just that easy search power I also run two Dream Mirror of Chaos. Now, this is the fusion spell for the deck. You fusion summon one Dream Mirror Fusion from your extra deck using monsters you control as fusion material. If a Dream Mirror of Joy is in the field zone, you can also use monsters in your hand. And if Dream Mirror of Terror is in the field zone, you can banish a monster from your graveyard as fusion material. And you can activate one Dream Mirror of Chaos per turn. But we do run a good number of different uh, Dream Mirror Fusion monsters, just having the option to go into our Dream Mirror Urkling using our Dream Mirror Tormentor is why we're only running two of this car. We run the other fusion options just for the option to go into one another with the tribute effect, but we have these to rely on different resources depending on the Dream Mirror monsters we also want to use. And then to finish off these spells, I run one Terraforming and one Call by the Grave. Now, I'm not running Monster Reborn or One for One, solely for the fact that all of the Dream Mirrors really only benefit when you special summon them off of different Dream Mirror monsters. So Terraforming is just to help with our field spell setup, searching out the field spell choice that we need, and Call by the Grave for stopping our opponent's plays. Like I said, there's no real benefit to running Monster Reborn or One for One in this deck, because we mostly focus on summoning out the Dream Mirrors with our own Dream Mirror monsters. 
And now moving on to the traps. I run three Dream Mirror Hypnogogia, I believe is how you pronounce that name. You choose one Dream Mirror of Joy and one Dream Mirror of Terror from your hand and her deck and place one into your field zone, the other one into your opponent's field zone. Face up, you can only activate one Dream Mirror Hyp uh, Hypnogogia once per turn. Now, this is an awesome trap card just for the fact that one, you'll take away uh, one of your opponent's field zones if they have it occupied, and then just being able to have the option to have both of the mirrors active at the same time means that depending on the type of card you're using you can benefit from all the different effects that each one of these cards would imply having the setup ready to go and all the different options available to you when you use both of your cards in the field since both of the field spells will be active it's a really really awesome trap definitely need three of it if you open it up and just have your monster ready to go then you have all the setup you need to you know basically take advantage of all the different dream mirror monster effects and I also run two of the new Dream Mirror Recap. If a Dream Mirror monster you control will be attributed to activate its own effect, shuffle it into the deck instead of sending it to the graveyard. And during the main phase, you can send this face-up card to the graveyard to place one of your Dream Mirror Joy or Dream Mirror Terror that is banished or in your graveyard face-up in your field zone. Then you can special summon one monster from your hand that specifically lists uh, that card placed in its text. So great special summon options and also just recycle power for your banished Dream Mirrors means that you can continue the activation late in into the game after you've used up a good amount of them but also being able to shuffle them back in the deck like i said there's no good reason that we're running them in the graveyard to use with monster reborn since they don't benefit from being special summoned by other spells so being able to put them back into the deck to then just resummon out with other monsters makes this a definite useful trap card i even considered it running it at uh three if i were to do so i'll show which of the traps i would take out for it but for some of the one-ofs i run one dream mirror fantasy and one dream mirror onio ramancy with this one having the option with fantasy to target a face up banished dream mirror no joy dream mirror terror and shuffle into the deck and if you do banish one card in the field more recycle power and then the uh, negation with our dream mirror on their mancy for the different stopping power of our opponents and then lastly the one metaverse for more field spell search in the deck if you wanted to run the third copy of dream mirror recap you can always take out the metaverse i like the setup we have with our main go-to dream mirror hypnagogia for the options but the metaverse is good as just one other additional card to rely on and that is it for the main deck we'll now move on to the extra deck for the fusion monsters i'm running two oneros the dream mirror Erkling, with this one being the light attribute version you need two dream mirror monsters with different attributes to summon out while face up on the field this card's also a dark attribute you can only use each of the following effects of oneros the dream mirror uh, Erkling, once per turn if another monster you control is tributed except during the damage step you can target one card on the field and destroy it and if this card in its own possession is destroyed, destroyed by opponent's card effect you can special summon one dream mirror monster from your graveyard except for oneros the dream mirror Erkling. so more setup it's the powerhouse of your deck being 3000 attack and 3000 defense the best benefit with this card is the fact that we also run two oneros the dream mirror tormentor with this one having the same options except in reverse as your Erkling being the tormentor having a light attribute option but when a monster effect is activated while dream mirror of terror is in the field zone quick effect you can negate that effect very very strong and also being able to then quick effect tribute this card to special summon one oneros the dream mirror Erkling from your extra deck in defense position can go back and forth between your different dream mirror monsters and then also for the tribute and putting tormentor in your graveyard can be the special summon option using your dream mirror Erkling for this card to special summon a target in your graveyard since a lot of the time with our setup like with dream mirror recap we're not going to have a lot of monsters in the graveyard to make use of for our dream mirror monsters and then as for the rest of the extract, most of the time the fusions are all I really go into, but still, for Xyz plays, I run one Slacker Magician, one Sylvan Princess Sprite for the rank one plays with the level one monsters, one Baguska, one Tornado Dragon, and one Abyss Dweller for the rank four plays. I don't run any of the higher level monsters for our uh, Dream Mirrors just because I really don't like going into rank eights when I have these powerhouses on the field already. And for the Link monsters, I run one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, one I P Masquerina, one cross sheep, one barricade board blocker, especially useful with all the different field spells, and one nightmare unicorn to finish off the extra deck. And then as 
for your go-to plays. It all depends on what mirror you have set up on the field. If you're able to search it out using your Dream Mirror Phantasms, you can then benefit knowing what mirror you have in your hand to activate and then what card you'll want to search out having that mirror set up on the field also. Activating that mirror and then going for the play to banish to the activation to add an additional monster. But basically, you want to have the uh, tribute effect if Dream Mirror of Joy is on the field having the reverse option will show you what card you want to search out then tributing that card to special summon the other dream mirror monster on the field special summoning it to then add a dream mirror card from your deck to your hand can benefit because then you have the option for all the different cards we run in the deck most of the time you'll want to go for the uh, dream mirror of chaos your go-to fusion play because then at the end when you activate your dream mirror of terror and also being able to tribute this card to then summon out another ekelos onto the field you will then have the option to summon Ekelos, and Ekelos will then be able to summon out another monster from your hand onto the field. And as long as the two different attributes, you'll be able to then activate your Dream Mirror of Chaos to then go into your main fusion monster, which you'll want to go into Tormentor most of the time, because then Tormentor has the tribute option to then go into Urkling. And with this, you kind of have a card you can go into again, be able to go into Urkling and then Tormentor using this option, and then just keep the play going from there. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I definitely ended up liking the Dream Mirror deck a lot more than I thought I would. A lot of these different unique decks, I definitely can't wait for Time Thieves as well. I think we're getting some new support in the Ghost from the Past booster pack for the Time Thieves. So definitely going to want to be updating that deck as well. But until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.